Hi everyone, welcome to Studio Jake. I, of course, am your host, Jacob Airy. This is your YouTube channel for comic book reviews, interviews, movie reviews. I talk about books that I'm reading, all kinds of great stuff. So be sure to like this video, share it out, and don't forget to subscribe, but also ring the bell, because, ring the little bell because YouTube is curating your subscription feed, so you may not get notified when I have a new video. So be sure to ring that little bell, that way you get notifications directly. And today, today, I am talking about a film franchise that I uh, that I really enjoy. It's one that I've watched every single movie. Um, it's none other than Ridley Scott's Alien franchise. And today I'm going to be ranking the worst to the best of the Alien Xenomorph film franchise. So buckle up, sit back, relax, and welcome to Studio Jake. All right, welcome back. So, my question for you is, um, who doesn't love a good Xenomorph plot? I mean, Ridley Scott's Alien franchise has gone through so many films. We've seen it go, it started in the 70s, and it's gone as, early, as late as 2017, and a couple of crossover films with the Predator series. Now, for the purposes of this video, I'm not talking about the AVP films, just because it's debatable if they're part of the Predator series or if they're part of the Alien series. They, the crossover there is um, is questionable. But you know, what do you like about the Alien series? Which one is your favorite? Let me know in the comments below. Now, I'm going to be ranking them uh, specific. I'm going to be ranking specifically the six canonical uh, films from worst. To best, I'm going to say what year they came out and who directed them. So some of them might surprise you, M maybe, maybe not. I don't know, but I'm going to uh, be talking about them and why I think they're on the position of the list than uh, differently than other um, than uh, the rest of the film. So without further ado, let's get started. Okay, so number six. This is the bottom of the barrel. The the scraping the grudge. The the uh, one that this one might surprise a few people because I, I know that there are some very spirited uh, defenses on this, but the very bottom, the worst of the worst of the franchise is Prometheus. It came out in 2012, and it's sad because it was actually filmed by the founder of the franchise, Ridley Scott. Now, when this film was first announced, it was going to be called Alien Prometheus. And, you know, with the colon or whatever it's called. But for some reason, uh, he decided to uh, change it up. And instead, it was going to be kind of this, um, almost like this atheistic creation myth story where it, it didn't really talk about the xenomorphs until a certain part of the film. And I should warn you, there all these films are going to have some spoilers, but... I think um, Prometheus is the worst, not because of the visual stuff. Visually, practically speaking, and CGI, it's actually one of the best of the franchise. I'll give it that. But the characters in it make ridiculously stupid decisions throughout the whole film. It's got some stuff. Now, I know there's some suspension of belief when it comes to uh, science fiction films. Duh, that's obvious. But you still want people to act like people. So like there's this one part in particular that I have a problem with where um, the ship Prometheus, the crew finds this pyramid and supposedly this is where the architects, now the architects are these aliens that visited earth and I guess they started the chain of human evolution. Like I said, it, it deals a lot with ridiculous creation myths, uh, just an atheistic creation myth that doesn't make sense. But anyway, so they send these two guys with these, probe things and they're supposed to be mapping out this alien pyramid slash ship or whatever it is. I guess it's not really a pyramid, it's an O-ring. Um, uh, the problem is though, the two guys who are supposed to be navigating it for the purpose of mapping, they get lost. They get lost. It's their job to find 
their way around so the others can come in and explore and that doesn't happen. Also, there's these two scientists in the films and when they discover the architects, which weirdly they find this shit because of a drawing with three dots on it. Sorry, not possible, but anyway. And so they find evidence of the of the of the architects, and one of them gets depressed. I'm like, dude, you found what you were looking for. You're gonna win the Nobel Prize. Shut up and quit whining. I mean, it, it makes no sense. I mean, that that whole sequence where he's he's talking with uh, David, the the AI intelligence on the ship, who is not so secretly nefarious. Um, so, you know, it just doesn't make sense. I, I'm sorry, but it, it's definitely it, it, it's definitely the worst film of the franchise. I mean, um, I'm sorry, it, it belongs at, at the bottom. Next we have Alien Resurrection. It's, it is the fourth film in the original franchise. It came out in, in 1997. It was directed by Jean-Pierre Younet, I believe. Now, he is kind of an odd um, person to pick for this franchise to begin with. He didn't really have any science fiction experience. He had mainly done French drama films. So hey, let's give him one of the most beloved film franchises of all time. And uh, yeah, that was a, that was definitely a mistake. So this film had all the pedigree. It had a really great cast of actors, including uh, Sigourney Weaver, and I believe uh, Ron Perlman is in the cast. And it, it's basically these uh, these cloners on a space station. They clone Sigourney Weaver's character, and they're also trying to develop a queen and also some uh, xenomorph aliens because reasons. Um, all of the all of the uh, motivations of the characters don't make sense. There's like this one bizarre scientist who thinks the xenomorphs is the ultimate creation, which again, uh, we see those themes again in Prometheus where it's like the franchise wants to create this, this creation myth, but it doesn't really make sense because if you're, in my humble opinion, as a Christian, as a, as a believer, um, you can't have a creation myth without a myth. Atheism doesn't give way to any mythology. I, I mean, it's just not possible. And so them trying to say, oh, well, this, um, this is how you do it. We're, we're these weird scientists. We're going to turn all the people on the space station into xenomorphs, and they're going to have a queen, and the queen has a womb now because she has a human DNA. I mean, I just think it's a little ridiculous. Um, it made no sense. It uh, it was very convoluted, and uh, just all around the the plot uh, was ridiculous. And, and Sigourney Weaver, she goes from because in in this movie, and again spoilers if you haven't seen it, she has a mix of um, of the queen's DNA in her, and so she starts off she's kind of aggressive and she has a, a little bit more. Uh, physical abilities than uh, the regular humans do, but and at first she starts off, and then she transitions kind of back to the way she was in the first three films. Just suddenly, you're just like, okay, well now we're back to happy go lucky Sig Sigourney. I'm I'm being facetious there, but there's really no transition for her character. Really, the only the only good character in the film is played by Ron Perlman. He plays like the space pirate who's delivering the alien eggs to the space station again because reasons. So. Uh, this, this one's definitely uh, num number five. It's it's second worst. What what makes it better than Prometheus is the presence of the Xenomorphs. <laughs> so um, again, in Prometheus, the, the Xenomorphs don't really appear till till the end, but um, in this film, they're prominent, and so that's why that's why this one beat out Pro Prometheus. Now we're to Alien Covenant. Now. Again, this one this one came out in 2017. It's uh, again directed by Ridley Scott. This movie came out after Prometheus, which came out in 2012. And I feel like this movie he was trying to fix the problems with Prometheus. I think he he realized it. And again, this film is really interesting. I wrote a review on it on my blog, so, so check it out. So I won't, I won't go too much into it. And, and one of the reasons it's higher than Resurrection and Prometheus is because um, it brought I think he was trying to bring back the franchise. Uh, if you see the first film especially, you realize that it's a cross 
pollination of horror and science fiction. And that's what this one is. Now, my issue with this film is it also tries to, to, to throw philosophy in your face. That's why it's number four. Um, it tries to throw its philosophy in your face. So it has this battle between faith, reason, and in the middle, nihilism. And like I'm all for a, a philosophical movie, and even one that goes against me, uh, against my beliefs, I'm okay with that, as long as the movie itself doesn't throw it in your face, and that's why this one is ranked lower. I think if he had toned down all the ridiculous philosophy, philosophical meanderings, especially from the villain of the film, um, there was this, this trend in 2016, 2017, and it's bleeding over into 2018, where all the villains have to be third-year philosophy um, college majors, and this film definitely suffers from that. But what makes it better than uh, Resurrection and Prometheus is, again, the actual presence of the xenomorphs, and also um, it... Um, and also, just it's visually a, a fantastic film. I mean, it's it, it's stunning to watch. Um, I like the main character. I know that uh, I can't I can't think of the actress who plays her um, off the top of my head, but uh, she got a lot of ridiculous comparisons to C C Sigourney Weaver's character Ripley. And I don't think that was really fair to her. I think they did a good job of making her character different, uh, but I do feel that. Um, that, uh, that Danny McBride's performance in the film also was really good. There was this, one of the reasons it's lower, because it would have been higher on this list, but again, just the villain, he lacks any really central motivation to what he is doing, to what he's trying to accomplish. And to, to, for those disappointed, no, the Xenomorphs are not the main, they are not the, uh, the antagonists of this film. So... I feel that uh, that is why it's ranked lower. It would have been rated higher than this next film, but but because of that, just these ridiculous... This was the problem with Blade Runner 2049. The main villain played by Jared Leto, who didn't even have a showdown with any of the protagonists, um, they make them these philosoph this philosoph these philosoph philosophy kings, and it's just, it, it's just kind of ridiculous and... And when I don't care about the villain's philosophy, in, in the Dark Knight, there's a brief scene with where the Joker is is kind of shoving Harvey Dent into insanity, and he becomes Two Face and all this. And his philosophy is explained in in one sentence: "I'm an agent of chaos." Right? He, he doesn't need a a ten minute long monologue of why chaos and anarchy is better. It, it, it sums up in just that one line. And yeah, he does kind of have a back and forth where he's, where he's uh, telling Dent, you know, I, I, uh, I pushed, I took your plan and flipped it on its head because, you know, I'm, you know, I'm an agent of chaos and throwing a little anarchy in all this. But again, it's not like a 10 minute mo long monologue. And again, it, 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 and another reason it's lower is because, again, Ridley Scott's obsession with pu pushing an atheistic um, creation myth, which is not possible. You can't have a creation myth with atheism. I think it's kind of, um, I think it's kind of uh, sad. Maybe I'll do a, a video on, on that at some point. So anyway, that, uh, number four, uh, Alien, uh, Alien uh, Covenant. And I, again, I, I recommend it. Like it's a, it's a fine film for what it is. Just it doesn't go back to to the originals. Number three is Alien 3. At this point, this list is going to be a little predictable, as you can probably imagine. So, basically, I feel like this film, it was made in 1992, directed by David Finchner, who I believe this was one of his first feature films. I can't remember if it was the first or the first, but uh, needless to say, um, I, I, I enjoy David Finchner. Sometimes he's a little hit and miss, but I feel like this film, a lot of the criticism is because Aliens, which more on that film in a second, was so good that this film doesn't quite reach that level. And so it gets a lot of undue criticism, um, partially because I feel like Finchner, he killed off all the major characters from Aliens, with the exception of Ripley, again, played by Sigourney Weaver. And uh, I think that that wasn't really right. I think that maybe that was a mistake, but I feel like he brought this forward and brought it to a new level. So basically, the first Alien film had like its roots in sci-fi horror, and 
Uh, and I feel like Finchner was trying to do that again. He was trying to replicate the horror feeling. It takes place in a prison planet. There's this alien uh, who now is a quadruped uh, running uh, amok in the prison. Ripley has a alien queen um, attached to her, and uh, she wants to she wants the prisoners to kill her, but they don't. But they're not going to kill her until they kill the quadruped alien. So. Um, I feel like because of how great number two was that this film gets a lot of undue criticism that really it doesn't deserve. Um, I feel like this is an example of the studio messing up a film. So Finchner made the film. It went to the studio and then they had one of their executive producers who probably didn't sit in on the film go through and edit. I mean, this was Finchner's complaint about the film was he said, it's not even my, my picture. You know, they did a series of re reshoots after he was gone. And I can't remember if he actually oversaw, uh, the, the reshoots or if, um, or if they got someone else, like, I can't remember what the whole, uh, circumstances of that are, but basically he lost control of the film. And I feel because of that, the film could have been way better, uh, because Finchner is such a good director. He's, he's one of the best storytellers around. So going, uh, going to that, I, I think that this film gets a lot of undue criticism. I think it did try to bring the, the franchise back. It does have a little lack of xenomorph action that you would want in an alien film, but outside of that, I think it's, a, I think it's pretty good. I think it ranks higher than the, than the ones I just addressed, uh, for this reason. In 1986, James Cameron stepped up and brought us Aliens. And this is the film that really got made the franchise a little bit more well-known, and that's why it's number two on this list. Cameron took the Alien franchise and made it more of a scientific action sequence, which we come to love from James Cameron. Whenever Cameron goes kind of outside his comfort zone, we kind of get films that are good when you see them in theaters, but then when you rewatch them, you're like, man, that was boring. Like, uh, like Titanic. I saw the Titanic once and I was a little stunned by it, but then it doesn't age well. Avatar didn't age well on the opening day. As you saw, it just kind of went right after its first couple of opening weekends. Anyway, um, that being said, Cameron has been, has produced films that are, uh, that will go down in history, legendary, like, the Terminator, the first two Terminator films, and uh, Aliens. I don't know why he didn't just call it Alien 2, but you'll have to ask him. But this one is, um, Ripley is discovered by the same corporation that sent the first ship out into space. I'm not going to try to pronounce it. And um, and so she gets sent back with a uh, another uh, group, and it has some really good actors in it. Um, Bill Paxton is one of the characters. And they and she says, "Don't go back to this planet because the, because of the xenomorphs." And they're like, "Oh, there's been a colony of terraformers there for years." And then what happens? The the terraformers uh, get attacked by the xenomorphs. So they're sending her back with this uh, military unit. And I feel like this film, even though it brought it more to a science fiction action stage. I feel like it had a lot of imagination. It was a good twist on the film. Um, the, what makes it drop down to number two, the reason I, I don't like it as well as number one, is because it did kind of lack some of that suspense that drove the first film in the franchise. So that's why it sits at number two. I still enjoyed it. I thought it was. I thought it was amazing. I thought it was fantastic. James Cameron, obviously a talented director, though he seemed to have lost his uh, um, lost his mojo a little bit in these in these last couple of years. But that was when he was at his peak, directing really fantastic films. So definitely, uh, Alien Ends deserves its spot in uh, number two. Alien, made by Ridley Scott in 1979. It's the first adventure that brought terror to viewers with the infamous tagline, In space, no one can hear you scream. It was scary, suspenseful, downright um, foreboding, and what made this first film so great was it was one of the mainstream sci-fi horrors. I mean, you, you had some 
but they were real cheesy, real corny, uh, ridiculous special effects that no one thought was believable. But this film, using an A-list budget, produced an A-list science fiction horror film. There's one xenomorph on the ship, it starts killing the crew, and actually, a lot of people don't realize this, but this first xenomorph was actually played by an actor who was wearing a costume, and they added in the and the sounds later. I'm kidding about the clicking sound, I just wanted to throw that in there because it's fun. Um, but anyway, uh, and of course, Sigourney Weaver as Ripley, a fantastic performance. I honestly am not sure that she's topped it. And uh, maybe in two, maybe you can make a case that in uh, Aliens, she she performed better, but I don't think so. I think this film, it brought it back. It was, it, like I said, it was scary and suspenseful. It had, it had a movie soundtrack that fit perfectly with the story. Um, so much action and adventure in, in it, and um, it's, it really shows why Ridley Scott is such a good director, is his ability uh, to mold these things. And I feel, um, and, and I'm so sad because now he's become kind of this hit and miss director, well, where he'll do one that's just blow me away amazing, and then he'll do another one like Prometheus, which is, which is just a total dud. And I really hope that, um, that we get... Uh, something like this in the future. Just, um, I, I would like to see one last alien film, uh, just because um, I want him to redeem the franchise, and in a way that Covenant wasn't able to. I would, I would really like to uh, to see that happen. And who knows? Maybe, maybe it will happen. Like I said, he's a good director, and the fact that he's been producing these stinkers and duds, um, it, it's really disappointing. So, you know, going back to this first film in the franchise, the fact that he was able to do what he did in such in such a an amazing cinematic way, um, establishing a key figure in nerd culture and pop culture as a whole. I mean, it was one of the first uh, films to kind of bring science fiction into the mainstream. Um, of course, you know, uh, Star Wars, Star Trek, and all these other films, but a lot of people, like, they, they wouldn't admit it, but they liked Star Wars. They wouldn't admit it, but they liked uh, Star Trek. But you could always say that you, you liked... Uh, Alien, and so I think that was one of the film franchises that uh, paved the way to bringing science fiction into the mainstream. So that's why this film sits at number one. All right, so here we are in the last few minutes of Studio J. Now, for those of you who are going to ask, yes, I based this episode on one of my blog posts. I'm trying to do that a lot more, which. Uh, again, if you disagree with me, let me know in the comments. I would like to hear your thoughts, what your rankings are. So uh, let me know. Um, type type me in a message. Tell me what you think. Which is your favorite alien film? Do, are you one of those who thinks Prometheus was, was better than Covenant? Tell me why. I, I have these people who will just say, you're wrong. And just leave it blank. And I'm like, okay, well tell me why I'm wrong. Explain to me so I can maybe understand your argument. It doesn't mean I'll agree, but maybe I'll at least under understand your argument. So let me know. Again, you can find me on Twitter at RealJacobAry. Instagram is real.jacob.ary. And of course, follow, oh, other side, follow Studio Jake, hashtag Studio Jake on Instagram. I post pictures and updates and even screen captures from uh, some of my episodes. So you'll definitely want to look for that. Also, uh, don't forget um, to subscribe uh, to my blog. It's jacobairy.blog. I've got movie reviews. I do more stuff like what I did today. I've got like top 10 best Ant-Man costumes, top 20 best Batman. So check those out. I've got more movie reviews, graphic novel reviews. And also, be sure to check out my Facebook page. I curate everything on my Facebook page. So it's author Jacob Airy on Facebook. And of course, be sure to subscribe. I'm going to have a special Labor Day uh, vlog on uh, Monday. And then of course, I'll have my regular uh, Wednesday vlog. And next week, my all-star guest, Samantha Sullivan, returns. We're going to be talking about some uh, really interesting stuff that week. So I'll see you next time. 
right here on Studio Jake.